What's up guys, it's Craft Studios here. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Not Let's Go Eevee, but Let's Go Pikachu. So let's get started. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Now, I'm going to be, I have a confession, I have not played any many Pokemon games before this. I played Pokemon Blue one time, and then Pokemon Go. So going into this game, I am fairly new and fairly, fairly casual saying that's probably gonna upset a bunch of people but whatever it's true but anyways let's get into the presentation now this game basically presents itself as sort of a reboot of the other games you know it's just like the other games you're catching pokemon and you're facing other trainers and battling their pokemon really that's the simple stuff um but graphically graphically it looks pretty good i think it looks great i don't think it looks absolutely stellar um it does look a bit i don't know this was mentioned in one of arlo's videos but um i'll leave a link to the video in the description but he kind of described it where this game just kind of looks like a 3ds game that was kind of just up for the nintendo switch and to be honest it's not necessarily a bad thing it looks good but it just doesn't look exactly really really stellar and again i'll link the video where arlo said that but the point is graphics are not the worst they can be and they're not the best they can be they look really good but they can be way more especially since like i said before but really overall presentation wise not too bad story wise there really isn't much of a story basically you and your best friend get your Pokemons from Professor Oak, who gives you the first Pokemons you get. <laughs> that sounds weird. And then you're basically getting badges from these gym leaders and battling other Pokemon and trying to get the best ones like Mewtwo and stuff like that. Story-wise, I can't really say a lot. Gameplay-wise is where things really start shining. You can move around the overworld and you can do a lot of things like chopping down trees and other stuff like feeding Pikachu and playing with him. And you can also get stuff like Pokeballs and stuff like that. Um, but once you get into an actual like fight, when you're fighting other Pokemon, here's where things get a little bit more interesting because you can because you have a certain amount of attacks that you can use, and you can use these to damage Pokemon. And certain Pokemon, like a water Pokemon, most likely would be better against a fire one. That might not be true, but hey, it's an example. Um, and that's not the only thing. There's also um, catching the Pokemon, which if you play Pokemon Go, you will know it's very similar. Um, catching them isn't really much of a problem, though lots of times I have found myself getting really, really, really annoyed with catching them. Because sometimes they just keep avoiding your Pokeball. Whatever, regardless of what you do, you can get an ex excellent one, and then they just pop out. They just somehow escape it multiple times. In fact, there was one Pokemon that every time I threw the Pokemon ball, it just kept getting out of it, and I eventually just had to run off because I just was like, I'm not wasting any more Pokeballs on this. And it's not like this for every single Pokemon, but it could be a little easier. But really, gameplay overall, it's what I expect. It's not too bad, and it's honestly a lot of fun. It, it, it's a lot of fun battling other trainers and catching the Pokemon anyways. And now we get into controls. Now the, con now the game controls just fine. I'm not going to explain the actual controls because I don't feel like doing that. But yeah, but control-wise, it works really well. Although, here's where I have a bit of a minor gripe. Now, this isn't necessarily a really, really big gripe, but I need to bring it up. It's not something that hurts the game at all, but I need to bring it up. You can't use a Pro Controller or two Joy-Cons at one time. The only controller options you have, at least right now of the review, you can only use either just the left Joy-Con vertically or the right Joy-Con vertically. The Pokeball Plus accessory, which you have to pay for, or in handheld mode. Now, I don't know why they didn't make the Pro Controller and or two Joy-Cons compatible, because it, it, it would work. 
because if it works in handheld mode, then it should work with a Pro Controller and two Joy-Cons perfectly. With Super Mario Party, I mentioned in my Super Mario Party review, possibly, that I do kind of wish that they could have put, like, more, have more controller options, like handheld mode and other stuff like that. But with Super Mario Party, I can understand why, because there's a big emphasis on motion controls, and doing that in public is probably not the best thing in handheld mode. It makes a sense to some sort of capacity there. But the thing is here, it can work with a Pro Controller. There's proof it can be done. If they could have done it in handheld mode, they could have done it in, with a Pro Controller. Like I said, it's nothing that's really, really big. It doesn't hurt the experience at all, but it would be nice to have the option. It would really be nice if maybe in a slight update, they could just make a quick little update right now, and they could fix that. But knowing then, they probably won't. Or at least not this quickly. But please do. If anyone's watched from who made this game watches this. But really control wise, it controls great. Everything responds pretty well. And yeah. Soundtrack now the soundtrack. I'm really need to get better with these segments. Anyways, soundtrack wise, it's not too bad. I don't th nothing really stands out too much to me. It probably depends on your taste in music, but I'm not going to deduct any points from that. The music's alright. It's not anything that's not stellar. It's not like a Smash Brothers soundtrack. But still. And now we go into content. Now this game is a, at right now, what I paid for, $60. For a $60 game, it does offer a lot. I mean, really a lot of it is just to catch all 150 some Pokemon. And really, it's just about battling it out. Content-wise, like, it really isn't that bad. It really does work. It's just like the old days when you would see kids playing on their Game Boys and Game Boy Colors, kept collecting all of those Pokemon and trying to get that Mewtwo. But yeah, really content-wise, I can't deduct any points. It's a $60 game. They could have reduced it to $40, but I'm not going to deduct any points. Content-wise, it's what I expect. And now my final thoughts. Really, I think this game is a great game. For being the one of the for being the main first Pokemon game I've played outside of Go, this is one of my favorite this was really good. This is my favorite Pokemon game right now, at least until the core the main core Pokemon games come out next year. But it's like really speaking, this game, I I love it a lot. I wouldn't say it's my fav one of my favorite Switch games. It's a good game, but it isn't something I would always come back to. But still, it's a lot of fun, and I would totally recommend it to anyone, because it's just that easy to do. On my scale of 0 to 10, I would give this game a solid 8 out of 10. So yeah, that was the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu review video. Uh, finally got it out. I'm sorry I got out a little bit late. Um, I'm not even in my actual house right now. I'm actually in a different place right now. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. And thanks for the support you guys have been giving me. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys want to see more of this stuff. Um, and let me know in the comment section if you guys agreed with this review or not. And yeah, also follow me on my social media. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Take care.